Hi everybody, I'd like to take a moment to talk about a very important ratio called the Schiller PE ratio that is often discussed when thinking about whether the market's overvalued. Oh, it's too high, the market's gonna crash, right? Or we're in a, we're in a great buying opportunity, it looks very cheap, okay? So this is a ratio that people often refer to to think about whether the market's overvalued. The, the most common or very popular one to look at is called the Schiller PE ratio. It was, it's constructed by Bob Schiller at Yale who won a Nobel Prize. And what the PE ratio is doing fundamentally is it's thinking about the price of securities and comparing them to the earnings that they already earn from the assets that are, that are in place. And, and specifically for the Schiller PE ratio, they're comparing the price of the S&P 500 or Standard Poor's 500 index, which is the 500 large companies in the United States. And it's comparing the, ratio, the price that they are in the market today to the, to the earnings that they have had on average over the last 10 years. So we're thinking about, again, assets uh, in place and what they can produce and then how much you're paying for them. Okay, that's effectively what this is doing. Now, one very important thing to remember when you look at a price to equity ratio is that the, uh, that the price is, is looking forward, right? When you buy a stock, you don't care about what they earned in the past and what they have because they probably, if they've distributed those earnings to their shareholders, they're not for you, right? So if you're a new owner of the firm, what do you get? You get all the future earnings. Right? And you get all the future dividends that that firm is going to pay. And so what we care about when we think about the price of a stock is not the assets and how they've produced in the past, but we think about how, what are the assets and what are they going to look like in the future? What are the future cash flows going to look like? So that's a very important thing to remember is that price is about future cash flows and what's going to happen in the future potentially? Growth. So price is going to capture the fact that you are growing if you're growing, right? And uh, the denominator, which is the earnings, is going to be the is backward, it's effectively backwards looking. It's like, what did you recently, how did you recently perform? Well, in Schiller's case, what was the average earnings of the last 10 years? That's a pretty backward looking measure. Okay, so, so that's important because let's look at this Schiller PE ratio over time. You can see actually that interestingly, this figure goes back to the late 1800s. And you can see that we've been in this 10 to 20 regime right? We've gone from about 10 to 20 multiple and, and sometimes a little beyond that. And when we go up or down uh, in, in, in sort of the extreme, right? Like a Black Tuesday, it seems like there could be a sudden correction. If we're very low, like at five in the 1920s, there seems to be a great time to buy and the market goes up, right? And so you see this oscillation between 10 and say 20 PE ratio. And again, people use this as some measure of whether the market might be overvalued or not. Now, uh, I think that's uh, there should be a lot of caveats with anyone discussing this or any lots of warnings, right? Because that's not a, that there's a lot going on in this ratio again that you need to think about. So for example, you know, has the we it seems like there's been a shift from this 10 to 20 PE ratio regime to a 20 to 40 PE ratio regime. Right? If you look more recently, right? We've been between 20 say and 40. Does that mean that uh, the whole market has been overvalued for the last 30 years? Not necessarily. What happened in 1990, right? Why might there have been a change in this regime of PE ratios in 1990? Well, we had the introduction of the internet. We had a bunch of technology that revolutionized how we produce products. It revolutionized the type of companies that we have today. You have companies that have that can go global with very little capital, relatively speaking, right? Versus a manufacturing firm or, or a Walmart or something like that, which might be more capital intensive, right? So you have a different change because of technology in the, in, uh, in the ways firms produce, and you also have different types of firms in the mix. And again, those firms might be able to grow. They might be high growth firms, think like Facebook and Google and Tesla, these firms that are sort of technology driven uh, and doing new things, they are able to potentially grow to very large scales in the future. And, and and so if you compare the future expected cash flows that that firm is going to give you and all that growth relative to the assets that they have in place, um, the existing earnings potential, right, you, you will see a high PE ratio. But it could just mean that the market is expecting that there's going to be a lot of growth. Why might there be a lot of growth again? Because we've gotten a lot more efficient. We have technology that helps us produce things more efficiently and we haven't fully captured that yet. We're still in a growth phase where we're, we're still going through these revolutions. So. 
Recently, if you look at the PE ratio, it's like we're at 36.6. It looks like we're at a higher end of the, uh, of the ratio spectrum. Now, again, like what is the S&P 500? It's, let's say, Apple, right? Or a lot of the S&P 500 is Apple, the FANG stocks, right? That make up a big proportion of the... And these kinds of firms are growing uh, generally quite rapidly. Um, and they have... And, and so their earnings uh, are are going to be growing. But also, if you think about the earnings of these companies, um, if they are growing, what do you do to grow? You invest in the business. You have to buy people, you have to hire people, you have to buy equipment, you have to do research and development, you have to expand your products, right, which is research and development. All of those things are expenses, which are going to reduce the earnings today. So again, you're taking the price of the stock, which thinks about all the future earnings and dividends, and you're comparing it to the earnings today. But the earnings today is is not just the earnings that you could have earned without growth, right? It's the earnings that you are that are you have after you've taken all those investments into growth into consideration, right? So actually, we this could just be that if firms are investing a lot in growth opportunities. Again, hiring people, so you have lots of S SG&A expenses, or you have lots of um, investment in machines, and and so you have more depreciation expense, right? And and all of these things are being set up in order to have that growth and realize that growth going forward. Okay, so it could be that we are richly valued, but one thing that you need to remember when you, is that just because it's high doesn't necessarily mean that we're overvalued. It could also mean that the market has high expectations of growth, and those could be valid, right? And, and again, the earnings could be artificially low for these companies if on average for, again, lots of these 500 companies, they start to look like the FANG stocks and they're investing a lot in growth and the, and the earnings are artificially low, right? Maybe if you think about more normalized earnings where you, you back out all the investment in the firm and you think about what would this business actually produce today, the PE ratio would be relatively more moderate. Okay, so I think those are some of the important points I wanted to highlight. Again, PE ratio captures growth, okay? And we have had a regime change. So you can't just look at this chart and say, like, oh, we're, we're so overvalued. This market's been for 30 years overvalued. That's, 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 um, that's not necessarily a correct conclusion. And, um, and so I thought that was interesting, and I wanted to just share it with you guys. Okay, see you guys.